frightened you. Oh, don't be so... They still imagine I can turn you. I don't want you branded as a traitor. I want you safe behind a desk. Out of the war. You come over here. And you act as if nothing had happened. They've grown so much. It does hurt to see them. How could we live a lie together for 12 years? I don't want the children's lives made miserable any more than you do. I undertake to leave them here in England for a year. You want nothing in return? I should certainly expect you to drop this absurd business with Stinnis. Stinnis got to do with us. You make another move towards him and I shall consider any undertaking made about the children to be null and void. It won't be my decision. No. But you do have a great deal of influence. If you want them to drop it, London will drop it. Do not report our meeting to anyone at London Central. Or else? I won't contact you again in quite such a civilized manner. Pull in over here where you pick me up. What did she say? Well, that, that she misses the children. She wanted to talk about them. That's all? You have seen her. Not a word, Tess. Not even to George. Hi. Impressive. Well, I suppose we're training. Don't tell me the PM sent for me. Panic at the ranch. 
World War Three. So how long has this been going on then? Weekends, most evenings. I've got something for you to do. Unofficial but dangerous. I need somebody traced, but discreetly. What does that mean? It means you have to be very careful. And it also means that only you and I know about it. It's very important to me, Julian. I really need this information. A car and a registration number and a Jamaican nurse. Uh -huh. Caught a crab, didn't I? No heroics. She's with a man in KGB called Mostlin. Very dangerous. Secret Life of London Central. Mackenzie rose on the river, you know that? What do you do? I just get fat, Vicky. Feel better and cleaner for exercise. Look at me, I just about worked off that head cold. Want some chaga? Daphne! Jagger! You summoned me. Why is Werner Volkman coming over tomorrow? I didn't know he was. Oh, thank God for that. I was beginning to think I was the only one who didn't know what was going on. I presume Brett's in direct contact with him in Berlin. Trying to breathe new life into his defunct Brahms section. At our expense, Bernard. I'd just like to know who the hell your friend Werner thinks he's working for. Werner's not working for anyone, Dickie. Because no one's paid him yet. In theory, he could turn around tomorrow and offer stinnies to the West Germans and there's damn all we can do about it. Well, it's up to you to make sure he does nothing of the sort. Daphne's got a turbot for tonight. You're bringing the girlfriend. Remember. Oh, hello. Hello. Look, you and I appear to have an invitation tonight. Dickie Cryer likes to meet his staff informally and, well, you are my temporary adoption German desk. I I'm sorry about the short notice. Tonight? Yep. Dinner at half past seven. Miss... Hello. Uh, do you want to sit down? Yes, sir. Mr. Cryer is head of desk, I'm afraid, so he pulls rather a lot of strings. It's the sort of silly social occasion that sometimes has results. I don't have anything to wear. And I can't really come in my work clothes, can I? Oh. I'm not going to have time to go home and change, so it looks as if I'm going to have to go out and buy something, doesn't it? If it's as important as you say it is. Why don't you come with me and help me choose something? Oh, no, no, I'm hopeless at that sort of thing. Look, can I come and use your place as a dressing room? I don't really want to use the loose. Yeah, sure, feel free. Great. Uh... Tonic. Unless you like tequila. 
Uh, no, no, Jill and Tom will be lovely, thanks. Okay. I should say no, shouldn't I? Restricted files must in no circumstances be removed from the building and all files are restricted. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, <laughs> that one. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Yes, they do rather drum it into you, don't they? Yeah. Where are your children? They're at their grannies. My mother's. Yes, they still think she's coming back, you see. Yes, so you can't... Can't... quite get rid of her. No. She's very beautiful. I remember her in the office. She was always very polite and very elegant. I'm sorry. I'm sure you don't want me prattling on about her. No, it's okay. Everyone does. She'd be quite amused to listen to some of it. But, um, how do you like it? It's very... It's very elegant. But then you always are very elegant. Come on. I'll take you to your room. I mean... Uh, Sorry, I'll take you to a room where you can change. Hello, Samson here, German desk. Julian McKenzie's on Lake Roster. My contact during the evening will be Mr. Cryer's house. Could you pass that on to him, please? Thank you. to rape the ingredients. Fine cooking. Mom's the art. Seems a seem to have done this very well, Daphne. I'm afraid Dickie was president of Bayreau College Wine and Food Society. University Wine and Food Society, uh. please, darling. Since you're so knowledgeable, Mr. Cryer, shouldn't you be doing the cooking yourself? <laughs> she won't let me anywhere near the kitchen. Dickie's capable of dirtying five pans, making one poached egg. <laughs> Daphne's taken up stripping, Gloria. Stripping doors, Gloria. And I don't actually do it, I just sell them. You must be the only person in London who hasn't yet heard the joke. I must say, it's, uh, it's quite an event having you here at last. Bernard's talked about you so much. Oh? When? When we were in Mexico. I didn't know you'd been talking about me in Mexico, Bernard. How long have you been in the department, Gloria? Nearly three years now. They told me when I first joined I might be able to take a degree at university. Miss Gloria's a linguist. No, not exactly. When did you last have someone on your German desk who could actually speak the language, darling? I mean, apart from Bernard. Oh, my wife seems to have recruited you already. Next time there's a vacancy. I'm sure you'll like it. Yes, we're all one big happy family on Dickie's desk, playing around with the paper clips. <laughs> He's very nice, isn't he? Yes. Shoots his mouth off sometimes. All the brightest young men go to Balliol, don't they? Well, at least that's what they say. Where did you go? I left school at 16 and went to work. Not for the department? Sort of. But you can't sit the civil service exam at 16. Well, I was in Berlin. That's where I grew up. 
knowing the language and being streetwise was all I seemed to need. Paperwork was done later. Well, that was a lovely evening. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Did you say you had some tequila? There's no salt around the room, I'm afraid. No, just lipstick. What was it you were saying about me in Mexico? Did you bet Dickie Cry you could get me into bed? No, it was nothing like that. We were talking about staffing and your name came up. Or did you say you already had me in bed? Certainly not. You're a terrible liar, Bernard Sampson. Did anyone ever tell you that? How have you survived so long as a secret agent when you can't even tell one little white lie? You told Dickie we were lovers, didn't you? Admit it. I might have said something that gave him the wrong impression. You see what it's like. I have half an hour to catch the last train. There are three empty bedrooms in the house. It's good night, Mr. Sampson. And thank you for a lovely evening. in midday. Another lunch instead of payment? I'm pushing as hard as I can. Have you heard from Stinnis? He's not going to make the first move. He's waiting for my wife to show her legs for queen and country. I want to be written back in the book, Bernie. If you're expecting me to pimp my wife, I am not doing it as a freelance. What do you want? A salary and a pension? I want recognition, that's all. And a fee! I told Zena I'd be coming back with the cash in my hand. Moskin's in London. Cleared him a security. How the hell do you think he got to the door downstairs? The game proceeds, Bernard. No matter how much Dickie flaps with your friend today, he's had a directive to pay the Balkmans, okay? Now you're the file officer. In crude terms, that means you're responsible for the money. In even cruder terms, it means you carry it in your suitcase to Berlin. Tonight. You go back with Volkman and make sure his wife knows what she's meant to be doing before you crack all the greenbacks at her. Well, the payment ought to be made through Werner, you know. No, no. She's the direct link. She's the one you've got to keep your finger on. Bear in bits and pieces. Installments. Okay.
enjoyed last night. It was very kind of you. Where's Mackenzie? Uh, the Chichester police called from Sussex and he went rushing off. Rushing off? How? Called a car from the pool. With a driver? No, he went alone. Bloody fool. they find out she's been over here and you haven't reported it? What if she shops you herself? Well, it's too bloody late to report it now, isn't it? I suppose that means the kids still think she's coming home. You're going to have to tell them sometime. Will Dickie take you to lunch? Santinis. He still thinks if he feeds me free lunches, he'll get out of paying me the serious money. Still finalizing the small print, that's what he said. I told him nothing would get done until it is paid. No disparate urgency, he said. your money in my bag and and it gets paid to Zena in installments whose idea was that Brett so this pimp doesn't even handle the money do you want us to stop You can't move. Your hands are tied. You try to back off Stinnis. London's going to think Moscow's paying you. Don't go away. Yep. Hello. I found the car. Where are you? A place called Bosom. They changed cars. They're in a green BMW now. Where exactly is the car? There's a group of old buildings. Timber clad. That's one of our safe houses. You keep well away. Julian? I hear you, boss. You stay in that car, lock the door, and wait for me, okay? Take care. exactly keep your car's low profile, do you?
about an hour ago. KGB with the gloves off. Your wife with the gloves off. I told him to sit here and wait for us. He didn't. You think they are still out there? Oh, come on, with a bloody mess like this, they'd be a hundred miles away. You could put out an alert. Sitting on a chair in the middle of the room, with a pistol held against the top of his spine. This is a formal KGB execution. What the hell are you doing? You're not going to leave him here, are you? you are going to leave him here. I thought we had a plane to catch. Have you come home, Liebchen? I promise I won't even speak about her. Speak about who, Mutti? You know, it's a funny feeling to think that um, she could be just five miles away on the other side of that wall, looking and smelling just the same. How do you know she's still the same? Have you seen her? Well, she never fitted into Berlin. And now we know why. So, no one calls for you, no messages, no voices, and you are quiet like a grave. Lass diesen Quatsch sein, ich halte es nicht mehr aus, so kann es nicht weitergehen. You must pick yourself up, Bernie. We'll have a little drink together. Kirschwasser. to come when you've established contact. Only 10,000 I'm being offered? 15 if it all goes well. But only 
only ten guaranteed. I'm doing this whole damn job for you. Without me, nothing happens. I'm your only contact with them. Do you know how you're going to make contact with him? I mean, do you have his office telephone number, or does he expect you to ring him at home? Do you ask the wives of all your friends to do this sort of thing for you? You enjoy doing it. Perhaps Harry Stinnes is a more interesting man than I usually meet. We need to know a lot more about him. His private life, marriage, children, and his wife. And we need a home address. So you can send someone over there. You are not sending Werner. He's been closed out of these. And eventually we need another rendezvous. He'll only talk in Mexico. Berlin frightens him. Look, Berlin frightens me. I'm not having your Frank Harrington masterminding my every move. I will not put anything to him without terms. Terms have to be a direct negotiation. I've told you he won't meet you in Berlin. You seem to meet him easily enough. Good friends. I can explain. Oh, very good. Men attract different attention. Is that the game you're playing? Girlfriends? You are paying me to do a job. The way I do it is up to me. And secrets to me. Have you ever been to a sex club in Berlin, Bernie? Be Werner. Was sagst du? Have you ever been to a sex club in Berlin to watch your wife play games with someone else and get excited by the game, Bernie? Listen. Screw your head together, Bernie. You must be careful. I don't want you taking risks over there. She got excited by the dangers and he got excited with her excitement. And now they're both excited by each other. Lovely scene, Bernie, lovely scene. No heroics, Anna. Are you listening to me? He took her back to his hotel. If they suspect Anna, they'll be watching his house. She went with him, Bernie, and got bloody angry when the whole seduction was interrupted. How does that make me feel? I was on my way into the hotel to stop the whole thing. If your West Indian nurse hadn't done it for me. My what? Changed from Red Hot Lover back into Major Stinnes KGB without blinking an eye. He had her out of that hotel lobby before her coat was back on. What? West Indian nurse. Nah. <laughs> now you're listening to me. I think it was Fiona's black matron. With a hypodermic. Which Dennis? I'm not happy with this game, Bernie. I need a drink before I go. Makes it feel different. Being paid by you a lot again for going over. I just hope your wife's not waiting for me on the other side. She knew damn well you wouldn't report seeing her. Another one? Maybe.
They'll find out, Bernie. They always do. Maybe by guesswork. But sooner or later, London Central is going to know Fiona flew into Heathrow for three hours. And that you were brought there to see her. Then they'll find Mackenzie. Or what's left of him by then. for bridge. So I doctor can go to bed. Well, maybe I want to go to bed. Ah. No, 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 no. I have an English friend to cheer you up. Come on. I was told I'd probably find you here. A chap called Harrington says that you know more about this extraordinary town than anybody else. Lothar, was hast du inzwischen alles angestellt? Nicht? Bin ich immer am Leben? I thought you worked in Mexico. So did I. But when you've worked in the diplomatic service for a few years, you soon realize the chap that you last saw doing the Korean language course in Seoul will next be found working as information officer at the embassy in Paris. Some guru in the personnel department obviously decided that my schoolboy German was just what was needed to be attached to you chaps for an undecided amount of time. No explanations, no apologies, no time to get ready, just wham bam and here I am. No bit, I think. Three spades. No bid. Little has unhappy cards. Six no trumps. Da schon provokat. I don't doubt it. The office wanted to put me into the Steigenberger or the Kempinski, but your chap Harrington said that this was the place to stay if I wanted to get a, a really proper feel at Berlin. I suppose you were here for some sort of cloak and dagger job, are you, with Dickie Cryer? Wrong twice. <clears throat> Dickie's safely tucked up in bed at home, and I'm here to collect a bag of documents. Courier's job. Short of people. No, really. I bet there's some poor devil out there cutting his way through the barbed wire with the KGB Doberman sniffing his tail. Have some more brandy, Samson. I hear you're a bit of a drinker. What you called Kish. Kishwasser. Very clean drink. What exactly are you doing here? Oh, the writing of some interminable report, proving how dangerous the Russians are, so that the MOD can get increased expenditure before the next budget review. This chap, Gorbachev, keeps all smiling on British television and saying he's only got our best intentions at heart. 
And the public at home think we're spending our money on the wrong things. You're trying to lead me on, aren't you? What was it that chap said? Agent provocateur. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me drunk, aren't you? No chance, old man. Drink you under the table any time. I'm not trying to get you drunk. It's the less you drink, the more there is for me. You really think you're quite a drinker, don't you? Oh, come on, then. Let's have another bottle of this clean vassa, as you call it. No, no, it's all right, it's all right. You put it down on my account. I think we've both had enough, Henry. I know your sort. I'll see you in the morning. You won't get away with it, you know. Get away with what? You know, Samson. Don't play the bloody innocent with me. You know. Good night, Mr. Bloody Samson. Many of you West Berliners like coming out here. You feel your city ends with the neon lights fade out. You shouldn't have sent him. You rather have gone in his place? She's having stinnis. Followed every move he makes. Told his wife? Your wife. He returns to Mexico next week. And I do not believe he will even consider your terms. I haven't offered him any terms. The psychology of the factory is not a quarter of a million dollars or a two bedroom house. Very good, Mrs. Volk. His words, not mine. Where did he get his figures from? That is. What London has offered him. Who made this offer? I made it. With whose authority? Frank Harrington. And your Mr. Renzeler. They also told me you have my second 5,000 to pay me. about Frank. I'm supposed to be file officer at this tennis game and now I find your girlfriend making offers I know nothing about. That was uncalled for, Bernard. Well, how the hell do you think he's going to react? Not everyone in London trust you to pursue this defection with total enthusiasm. Is that what all this is about? Just 
a little chat, where no one can hear us. About what? The stoop that you sent round to Liesel's the other night to fill me full of drink and get me to talk? How do you know he's trying to make me talk? Oh, he gave me a lot of foreign office hogwash, but I'd say it was internal security. I believe he is, yes. Does that mean I'm being investigated? We all get investigated from time to time. And you do have something of an outstanding problem. You mean a wife who defected? A wife who got away. Something else cropped up. Apparently he used to work for you sometimes. London have been asking whether you knew anything about his death. Seems he'd been dead some time when they found him. These questions part of an official inquiry? They'd be out here if they were. Was he working for you? Tiptree bring you these photos. This Mackenzie was found dead in one of her own safe houses. People might think he'd been killed by someone on our side. You mustn't be angry at asking these questions. It's not easy for me. All I'm trying to suggest is it's not the time to conceal any evidence you might have. If you have any doubts about how things may turn out for you, now will be the time to disappear. You mean defect? Call it what you like. You walk through Checkpoint Charlie and disappear. Forever. That's what you want, isn't it, Frank? Jesus, but I don't know what I want you to do. It all depends on who you are. Who I am? Someone's told you that I'm a Soviet agent. That's it, isn't it? You think I'm a Soviet agent and you're offering me a way out. in midday. Another lunch instead of payment? I'm pushing as hard as I can. Have you heard from Stinnis? He's not going to make the first move. He's waiting for my wife to show her legs for queen and country. I want to be written back in the book, Bernie. If you're expecting me to pimp my wife, I'm not doing it as a freelance. What do you want? A salary and a pension? I want recognition, that's all. And a fee! I told Zena I'd be coming back with the cash in my hand. Moskins in London. Cleared him with security. How the hell do you think he got to the door downstairs? The game proceeds, Bernard. No matter how much Dickie flaps with your friend today, he's had a directive to pay the Balkmans, okay? Now, you're the file officer. In crude terms, that means you're responsible for the money. In even cruder terms, it means you carry it in your suitcase to Berlin. Tonight. You go back with Volkman and make sure his wife knows what she's meant to be doing before you crack all the greenbacks at him. Well, the payment ought to be made through Werner, you know. No, no. 
She's the direct link. She's the one you've got to keep your finger on. Pair in bits and pieces. Installments. Okay. Police called from Sussex and he went rushing off. Rushing off? How? Called a car from the pool. With a driver? No, he went alone. German desk. I I'm sorry about the short notice. Tonight? Yeah, dinner at half past seven. Miss... Hello. Want to sit down for me? Yes, sir. Mr. Cryer is head of desk, I'm afraid, so he pulls rather a lot of strings. It's the sort of silly social occasion that sometimes has results. I didn't have anything to wear. And I can't really come in my work clothes, can I? Oh. I'm not going to have time to go home and change, so it looks as if I'm going to have to go out and buy something, doesn't it? If it's as important as you say it is. Why don't you come with me and help me choose something? Oh, no, no, I'm hopeless at that sort of thing. Look, can I come and use your place as a dressing room? I don't really want to use the loos. Yeah, sure, feel free. Great. Uh... I should say no, shouldn't I? Restricted files must in no circumstances be removed from the building and all files are restricted. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Um, <laughs> that one. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Yes, they do rather drum it into you, don't they? Yeah. Where are your children? They're at their grannies. My mother's. Yes, they still think she's coming back, you see. Yes, so you can't... Can't... quite get rid of her. No. She's very beautiful. I remember her in the office. She was always very polite and very elegant. I'm sorry. I'm sure you don't want me prattling on about her. No, it's okay. Everyone does. She'd be quite amused to listen to some of it. 
But, um, how do you like it? It's very... It's very elegant. <laughs> then you always are very elegant. Come on. I'll take you to your room. I mean, uh, sorry, I'll take you to a room where you can change. German desk. Julian Mackenzie's on Lake Roster. My contact during the evening will be Mr. Cryer's house. Could you pass that on to him, please? Thank you. They still imagine I can turn you. I don't want you branded as a traitor. I want you safe behind a desk, out of the wall. You come over here, and you act as if nothing had happened. They have grown so much. It does hurt to see them. How could we live a lie together for 12 years? I don't want the children's lives made miserable any more than you do. I undertake to leave them here in England for a year. You want nothing in return? Well, I should certainly expect you to drop this absurd business with Stinnis. Stinnis got to do with us. You make another move towards him and I shall consider any undertaking made about the children to be null and void. It won't be my decision. No. But you do have a great deal of influence. If you want them to drop it, London will drop it. Do not report our meeting to anyone at London Central. Or else. I won't contact you again in quite such a civilized manner. Pull in over here where you pick me up.
Tess, listen. Have you seen your sister? Seen her? Well, she called you. Have you seen Fiona? When did she get married, gently, Simon? The play was meant to be coaxed up by four stars. So many people rush in to rape the ingredients. Fine cooking. Mom's the art. It's a done this very well, Daphne. I'm afraid Dickie was president of Bayreau College Wine and Food Society. University Wine and Food Society, uh. please, darling. Since you're so knowledgeable, Mr. Cry, shouldn't you be doing the cooking yourself? <laughs> she won't let me anywhere near the kitchen. Dickie's capable of dirtying five pans, making one poached egg. <laughs> Daphne's taken up stripping, Gloria. Stripping doors, Gloria. And I don't actually do it, I just sell them. You must be the only person in London who hasn't yet heard the joke. I must say, it's, uh, it's quite an event having you here at last. Bernard's talked about you so much. Oh? When? When we were in Mexico. I didn't know you'd been talking about me in Mexico, Bernard. How long have you been in the department, Gloria? Nearly three years now. They told me when I first joined I might be able to take a degree at university. Miss Gloria's a linguist. No, not exactly. When did you last have someone on your German desk who could actually speak the language, darling? I mean, apart from Bernard. Oh, my wife seems to have recruited you already. Next time there's a vacancy. I'm sure you'll like it. Yes, we're all one big happy family on Dickie's desk, playing around with the paper clips. <laughs> Dickie's very nice, isn't he? Yeah. Shoots his mouth up sometimes. All the brightest young men go to Bailey on, don't they? Well, at least that's what they say. Where did you go? I left school at 16 and went to work. Not for the department. Sort of. But you can't sit the civil service exam at 16. Well, I was in Berlin. That's where I grew up. And knowing the language and being streetwise was all I seemed to need. Paperwork was done later. Well, that was a lovely evening. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Did you say you had some tequila? There's no salt around the room, I'm afraid. No, just lipstick. What was it you were saying about me in Mexico? Did you bet Dickie Cry you could get me into bed? No, it was nothing like that. We were talking about staffing and your name came up. Or did you say you already had me in bed? Certainly not. You're a terrible liar, Bernard Sampson. Did anyone ever tell you that? How have you survived so long as a secret agent when you can't even tell one little white lie? You told Dickie we were lovers, didn't you? Admit it. I might have said something that gave him the wrong impression. You've seen what it's like. I have half an hour to catch the last train. There are three empty bedrooms in the house. It's good night, Mr. Sampson. And thank you for a lovely evening. Cool. A couple of hours ago. Where from? Well, how would I know? Moscow, Berlin, wherever the hell she is. What's happened? What did she say? Well, that she misses the children. She wanted to talk about them. That's all? You have seen her. Not a word, Tess. Not even to George.
Hi. Impressive. Well, I'm supposed to be in training. No, <laughs> well, don't tell me. The PM sent for me. Panic at the ranch. World War Three. So how long has this been going on? Then? Weekends, most evenings. I've got something for you to do. Unofficial but dangerous. I need somebody traced, but discreetly. What does that mean? It means you have to be very careful. And it also means that only you and I know about it. It's very important to me, Julian. I really need this information. A car and a registration number and a Jamaican nurse. Uh-huh. Caught a crab, didn't I? No heroics. She's with a man in KGB called Mostlin. Very dangerous. Secret Life of London Central. Mackenzie rose on the river, you know that? What do you do? I just get fat, Dicky. Feel better and cleaner for exercise. Look at me, I just about worked off that head cold. Want some chaga? Daphne! Chaga! You summoned me. Why is Werner Volkman coming over tomorrow? I didn't know he was. Oh, thank God for that. I was beginning to think I was the only one who didn't know what was going on. I presume Brett's in direct contact with him in Berlin. Trying to breathe new life into his defunct Brahms section. At our expense, Bernard. I'd just like to know who the hell your friend Werner thinks he's working for. Werner's not working for anyone, Dicky, Because no one's paid him yet. In theory, he could turn around tomorrow and offer stinnies to the West Germans and there's damn all we can do about it. Well, it's up to you to make sure he does nothing of the sort. Daphne's got a turbot for tonight. You're bringing the girlfriend. Remember. Oh, hello. hello. <laughs> Look, you and I appear to have an invitation tonight. Dickie Cryer likes to meet his staff informally and, well,